Hi there, I'm Becky Hammond and welcome to Isogo TV. Wherever you are on your strengths journey, I want to help you take your greatest strengths and apply them to your everyday work and your everyday life. Today, this is episode 15, how to have your best one-on-one -on -one meeting part two. In part one, where we emphasized using your one-on-one -on -one meetings to understand the strengths of your team and maybe the people that report to you. Part two, we emphasize application. What questions can you use in your one-on-one -on -one meetings to help your team members apply their strengths to your team and to the role? And then once you do, the amazing impact that it can have on your team. I've seen it and I'm living it. So let's dive in. Back in episode seven, I shared with you some questions that you could use to get to your best one-on-one -on -one meeting that you as a manager could have with your team members as individuals. And that was what it was all about, individualizing those questions to their strengths, to get to know what are those talents that they bring to the table and that they bring to your team. And today, we're going to enter into part two of that conversation and that discussion about how can I make these one-on-one -on -one meetings really productive and really helpful for both of us. And it comes with a second set of questions which now that we know kind of what are their underlying talents, we can start to ask them questions that would help them apply their strengths to their work and to your team. That you as a manager, knowing all the moving parts of your team and what needs to get done, would be able to help them draw out of them the strengths that you know you need to show up for your team to help your team and get to your goals. So it might be like one of the managers that I was working with recently who was meeting with a team member who has high empathy. And he asked her a question like this, said, what is the last time you walked into a room and noticed what the sense was there? And, and not just a room, but to our team. What are our team meetings like? What is the general overall feeling of them? Or maybe he would ask, uh, it, it, propose it more like this like hey you know what I don't naturally sense the feeling and flow of a room uh, of our meetings and so when we are in those meetings I would love to draw on your ability to naturally sense those things kind of the environment that's happening and I, I would love for you to take note of that and let me know later you know how did it go what what do we need to change about our meetings in order for us to be able to connect better as a team so that we can ultimately uh, get more done and be more productive and get to our goals. Or uh, another example, there is a manager that I was working with who um, actually was, was frustrating, uh, frustrated and, and feeling even like maybe she wasn't cut out for this job as a leader, as a manager of this group of people. Uh, she leads from a place of being the glue of, of her team, uh, where she leads with a, a strong relationship sense of uh, developer, empathy, positivity, woo, communication. Uh, and she was starting to feel like maybe she wasn't cut out for this. But as we dove into it, we realized she offered so much in terms of depth to the team but what she needed to do was pull out of the individuals uh, around her the things that she didn't have or wasn't strong at. So that was those strategic thinking strengths and those that are really good at executing and getting things done. So in her next one-on-one -on -one meeting, let's say she was meeting with someone who had activator or achiever, she could ask them specific questions to draw out that executing strength, to draw out the ability to get things started and get things done. You know, she could say things like, uh, you know, what should be on our to-do list that isn't? Or she can uh, say, you know what, when we are in a meeting, I need you to help give me a signal when we've talked enough when we've shared enough about, uh, about what's going on and kind of how it makes us feel, and when we need to just kind of jump in and get started. 
you know, I don't necessarily see those things. That's not natural to my filter, but for you as an activator, it is. So please let, let me know when we need to jump in and get started. And when she realized that she could call on other people who were a part of her team to kind of bring in, fill in the spaces that she wasn't great at, it gave her confidence as a manager and as a leader that uh, she could just manage from where she was, but use her one-on-one -on -one meetings to draw out the strength and apply it to their team and make their team more productive and successful as a whole. And so when you are going into your next one-on-one -on -one meeting as a manager with your team or your staff, you can, now that you know kind of the underlying parts of their strengths, you can start asking them specific individualized questions to draw those strengths out of them and apply them specifically to your work and your productivity as a team. So let's use this. Managers, this just takes a little bit of prep on your part, just a couple extra beats before you head into that next one-on-one -on -one meeting to think through first, what are the strengths of the person that you're going to be meeting with? Then two, how can you see how those strengths can be used in their role? Maybe you need to be brought out more or can contribute something to the team. And then third, when you sit down with them, start asking them questions, start a conversation around those strengths and the way that you can see that those strengths add value to your team and where you need them to show up. You know, I have a companion resource to the resource I provided in episode seven for part one here for part two that lists out all 34 of the StrengthsFinder talent themes and gives you a couple starter questions that start to get the conversation going around application, around applying those strengths to your team. So I'd love to share it with you. Head on over to isogostrong.com and the blog post associated with this episode, episode 15, and you'll find it there, way down at the bottom of the post. And once you do have that meeting, or even as you're getting prepared, I would love to help you. I would love to know if there's any other questions that you have, or if there's anything I can do to help. So head on over to the blog to leave a comment there, or you can contact me directly. You'll be able to find that info up there on the isogostrong.com page as well. You know, I want this message of strengths to get out to the world, and that's why I'm doing this thing. I want to help people get past that hate and strife and unnecessary frustration that happens in work and life, and see people understand their own strengths and the strengths of the people around them and apply those in their lives. Their success instead of frustration can abound. So thanks for sharing Isogo TV to help make that happen. And really, I'm just glad that you showed up here with me and I hope that you join me next week too on Isogo TV.